that we're so excited about the holiday season, and I know everybody else is too. Um, don't get too excited, though. Remember, there's church on Sunday and Monday, and we're in service right now. Thank you, Jesus. And, uh, you know, it's just the Lord's been downloading so much information. I've been having dream after dream. And matter of fact, I sent out an audio about the last dream I had. And uh, boy, was that a good one. And uh, I was preaching the gospel inside of a bank. And I was up on a high tier uh, uh, preaching. And uh, Diane was there and we, we were having a good time. People were, it was packed, but everybody was separated. They were like uh, COVID separated. And it was just uh, full. What does a bank have to do with anything? Well, I sent out a video and told you what that meant. The bank simply means that we're always in the uh, working out of the inheritance of Jesus Christ. And we all have an account in Christ when we're born again. And so we learn to pull and we learn to download things from our bank. Matter of fact, we're not just in the bank. We own the bank. In Christ, we own all things. And we've inherited, we're co-heirs with Christ, so we are uh, cooperating with him in, uh, in divine fiduciary, in divine alignment, in divine assignment to become rich, Isaiah 1, 19 in the, in the Living Bible. Uh, if you'll simply obey me and just be willing, he said, I'll make you rich. I'll make you rich. So rich is rich. And so we just need to simply obey and adhere to and uh, do the things that he wants us to do. And they're all, all the things we need to do are revealed in God's word. God's word is wisdom. And uh, he reveals it to us day by day as we grow in him, as we grow up in him. See, a newborn child doesn't know anything about the bank. You've got to grow up and mature in some things before you can understand that there are savings in the bank and that you can actually put things in the bank store things in the bank that are of value and you can withdraw things and uh, you know this world gives you interest at times a very low meager amount of interest you know three percent uh, two and a half percent maybe five percent if you're fortunate but in god there's a 30 fold 60 fold 100 fold in a matter of fact an unlimited amount uh infinitum in terms of about every item we deal with there's an infinitum of blessing if you can believe for it and um and, and how do we get to that? How do we grow up in that? How do we receive in that genre? And how do we make it happen? Well, let me give you some scriptures to kind of give you a context about how this is done. And, and the first one I want to go to is Titus 2.11. It says, for the grace of God has been revealed. Everybody say the grace of God has been revealed. So this past tense, it has been revealed, bringing salvation to all people. That's in the NLT translation, bringing salvation to all people. Yeah, wow. Amen. Yes. And so, you know, that goes right along with Psalm 118, 24. This is the day the Lord hath made. Yes. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. The Lord, save us, we pray. We beseech thee, O Lord, send now thy prosperity. Send now thy prosperity, Lord. We rejoice in you. We're glad in you. Amen. And if you follow that video that I sent up, by the way, you can, you can see that video. If you haven't seen it yet, you can go to Stephen Coya Sterling on YouTube. Stephen, three, three, uh, three words, Stephen Coya Sterling. And it's right there. Um, it's called My Dream. And it talks about how we need to praise and worship God when, the, when we're sitting in the bank of heaven. We, uh, how do we withdraw? By praise and worship and thanksgiving. And rejoicing and being glad. Hallelujah. And you can receive all that is in the bank for you. We're sitting right in the bank. We're actually owners of the bank. We're entitled to everything the bank is holding. The bank of heaven is holding. Yeah. Praise God. That's what came through in the dream. And uh, in order for you to even know that you're sitting there, you've got to receive Titus 2.11. The grace of God has been revealed that bringeth salvation to all people. And you can't download it unless you, you know that uh, by grace you are saved through faith. Yeah. And that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. It's a gift of God. So grace is a gift. Uh, it's something given without restriction, without restraint. And we don't even, it's not something we earn. A gift is just given. 
and, uh, and, 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 and faith worketh by what? Love. Yes. And grace is what made it possible for you and I to receive what Jesus has to offer. Uh, since he died and went to hell, came and rose from the dead, and he's, he's been seated in Christ, and we're seated there with him. You know, that, you know, we're dead in the water without grace. You know, Ephesians 2, 5, it says uh, that even though we are dead because, our, because of our sins, he gave us life when we were raised with Christ from the dead, from the dead. Yes. It is only by God's grace that we have been saved. The New Living Testament, that's the New Living Testament translation. Because So without, without grace, we'd be dead in the water. We wouldn't have anything to stand on, nothing to hold on to. Nothing would be sure. Nothing would be firm. Nothing would be uh, in concrete, so to speak. But in Christ, everything is galvanized and glorious, gleaming and glittering, and just uh, totally maxed out in uh, infinitum and abundant blessings in abundant life. Hallelujah. And, and, you know, so if you're settled there and if you're so sink there and sock there and you know that you're a believer and you know you're born again and you know you're living in Christ and you know you've been raised from the dead, you're seated at the right hand of the Father in Christ and all things are possible there and all things are ours because Jesus is the heir of the world. We are joint heirs with him, not only of the world, but of, of heaven, the kingdom of God. We're joint heirs in the kingdom. And we have, we have a share in the kingdom. We have holdings in the kingdom. Glory to God. I mean, in the world, you know, you're going to invest uh, some money and you're going to try to buy stocks and you're going to try to buy um, holdings, uh, paper, paper that's going to uh, increase in value, you know, i.e., uh, you might be holding uh, mineral rights or uh, land rights or you might be holding houses or something, and they all uh, would, would accrue some type of uh, profit. But in Christ, we have whole, everything is ours. Everything. I mean, that's a lot, isn't it? When you think about everything, it's all ours. By the grace of God. Amen. Um, and when you're born again, you're qualified. You know, Acts 20, 32, it talks about the grace that operates uh, and helps us to flow in the promises of God. It enables the acquisition of our inheritance when we uh, disclaim the scripture in Acts 20, 32. It says, Paul says, now I commit you to God and to the word of his grace. See, it's the the promises are built on the word of God. The word of God is is held up and supported by His grace. Yes. I commit you or commend you to God and to the word of His grace, which can build you up and give you an inheritance among those who are sanctified. Who is isn't that powerful? Grace brings the scriptures we need. Grace, grace braces us to receive everything God has. Yes. Grace allows the funnel of the fluidity and of the prosperity and of the flourishing yes. of God's word to come into or cut into our life exactly what we need when we need it. And it comes in a, in a way where uh, it builds us up and lifts us up to receive everything that we've inherited in Christ. Amen. So it's the word of God that operates by grace. It's the word of his grace. Acts 14, 3. So they uh, remain for a long time speaking boldly for the Lord who, uh, who bore witness to the word of his grace. There it is again. Look at that. Uh, Acts 14, 3. So they remained for a long time, speaking boldly for the Lord, who bore witness of the word of his grace. Now watch what happens to the word of his grace when it begins to release, when it begins to have activation, when it begins to have access into your life, granting signs and wonders to be done by their hands. Granting signs and wonders to be done for their, uh, by their hands. So you know what? In this season, signs and wonders and miracles are, are, are being released because people believe that the word of God is working on their, for, on their, in their benefit and on their behalf. 
because of grace. Now, if you're walking along and, and, and you're thinking and singing that, uh, that Christmas song, you know, uh, you better not shout, you better not cry. Uh, Santa Claus is coming to town. He's making a list, checking it twice. He's going to find out who's naughty or nice. If you're going by the legal jargon and trying to live up the morality of God's law yeah. and testament and try to be perfect in every way, you're going to fail in every way. Sure the only one perfect is Christ Jesus, the Son of God, the Messiah. So we live out of his perfection. We live out of his light. We live out of his grace. Grace means I'm sweeping you in and pulling you in and I'm going to I'm going to be with you and I'm going to stand before Almighty God and I'm going to vouch that I have paid for all of your sin. I have paid for all of your indemnity and liability and losses. I am standing in as your go between. And amen. Everything Jesus receives, he said I am going to pull it down and I'm going to I am going to distribute it to you that believe and receive from me. Yeah. Woo, hallelujah. That's what grace is all about. But a lot of people can't receive grace because they're, they'll never get to the place of humility where they can have it because they're so heady. They're so spiritually proud and arrogant. They're so, so, so high-minded. There's no room for Christ to give them anything because they're taking up all the space. You know, and there's no room for grace. Um, you know, the word care is in grace. He wants to care for us. God never intended us to carry the load. God never, in carried, uh, it, 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 God never intended for us to make the grade and for us to do the heavy lifting. He never intended for us to be the boss. Amen. He is the father. We are his children. He is the shepherd. We are his sheep. Praise, you know, um, I like this scripture in James 4, 6. He says, but he gives more grace. Everybody say, he gives more grace. He gives more grace. Therefore, it says, God opposes the proud. Look at that. He's in opposition to, to the proud, to the independent mind, to the secular mind. To the mind will not acknowledge him. To the mind is not even contemplating him. For the mind is not even even uh, churching with him. Fellowshipping him. God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Everybody say, I receive grace right now. If you want to, if you want to flow in his fullness... You can't go by your own merits. You cannot go by your own morality. You cannot go by your own way of earning things. We're so used to having to earn everything in life. We're taught that way since we were children. We have to earn. We have to go to high school. We got to go to college. We got to go to uh, after uh, after the four years, go into more college, and we've got to train, 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 and work, 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 get loans, and get all kinds of uh, you know uh, help financially. And, you know, then take out a mortgage and then mortgage, you know, buy a car and a loan. And, you know, and then all those loans and mortgages prop us up and, and having to pay out for education as we go along. A lot of doctors are, are, are not that rich at all. And they spent their whole life getting educated. But I like what it says in John 1, 16. If you can catch the finer points of what I'm trying to say today and begin to flow in that stream. Get in that cadence. Get in that rhythm. Get in that expose. Get in that, get in that, get in that animation. I guarantee you, you can get anything from God that you desire to have. Did you hear what I said? You can get anything from God that you desire to have as long as, it, as you're abiding in him. In John 1, 16, it says, from his fullness... We have all received grace upon grace. Look at that. John 1, 16, from his fullness. Everybody say, from his fullness. From his fullness. How many would like to receive from his fullness? Yes, sir. I mean, if you're going to ask, you might, might, might as well ask largely. Even Jesus said that. You have not because you asked not, you know. Yes. From his ask that you might receive, he says, that your joy might be what? Full. God wants you to have fullness. Yes, 
And it comes by adhering to and receiving. A lot of people can believe, but they can't receive. A lot of people can believe God, but when it comes to receiving for themselves, they can believe for everyone else. True. But when it comes to their own personal life, they will, for some reason there's a there's a there's a block, there's a hesitation, there's a reservation, there is there's something that will not accept the fact that God wants them to receive. But I'm telling you, if you could just say, I receive, I believe, and I receive. We need to receive him as whatever we need him for. Instead of just receive him as your personal savior, receive him as your personal healer. Receive him as your personal banker. Receive him as your personal deliverer. Receive him in, in every area that he is. All the faces of him. Receive all the traces of him and all the goodness of him and all the greatness of him and all the God of him. Hallelujah. John 1, 16, for from his fullness we have all received grace, one grace to another grace. That's what it's saying. Grace to grace. One grace after another grace after another grace after another grace. So what we do is we go from faith to faith, strength to strength. We go from glory to glory. We go from grace to grace. It's all him. It's Everybody say it's all him. Thank you. He doesn't run out of grace. You know, and whatever you want in life, you've got to say it's coming by grace. You know, the word ace is in grace. When you pull up grace, you pull up the ace. You know, grace, ace, care. Um, race is in grace. It's for every race, color, creed, and gender. Praise God. Anybody can receive. 1 Corinthians 15, 10 says, By the grace of God, I am what I am. By the grace of God, I am what I am. So you could say, By the grace of God, I am rich. By the grace of God, I am well taken care of. By the grace of God, I am fulfilled. By the grace of God, I am totally satisfied. By the grace of God, I'm totally healed. By the grace of God, I'm well. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Anything after I am is yours. By the grace of God, Paul says, I am what I am. There it is for you. It's a carte blanche. It's, it's an open check. You, know, you talk about faith. You've got to believe in grace first. If you don't believe it's yours, faith won't do you any good. Faith will not do you any good if you don't believe it's yours. He that believe must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You can believe all day long that he is. You can have faith to believe for anything, but until you believe that he will reward you. And that, that's where grace, that's where grace cuts in. We got to get out of this mental mindset that we have to earn it. For some reason, we have to be good enough. For some reason, you know, uh, what we do, we've got to be certain uh, at a certain level, at a certain gradient uh, on a particular day to qualify. You know, just believe in grace. Grace has already preset and qualified you. I mean, yeah, I get letters in the mail all the time. It says you're pre-approved for a loan of $10,000. You're pre-approved for this credit card with, you know, 5% interest or 3% interest. We've got you pre-approved for a, a, a new a housing a building loan. And, you know, you're pre-approved for this and pre-approved. Listen, grace approves you. You're approved to receive anything God is and God has. Glory to God. You know. And if you don't believe that, and look at Hebrews 4, 16, it says, let us then with confidence draw near to God. Everybody, confidence and grace flow seamlessly together. Yes. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace. Did you know there's a throne of grace? Yes, sir. Grace is that imperial. Grace is that profound. Grace is that... Uh, king like that it has a throne yes. did you know that grace has a throne and that's where all grace comes from yes. let us therefore with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in the time of our need Amen. glory to God in the time of our need 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Woo, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I like what that psalmist said in, in Psalm 90, verse 17. He says, let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us. Let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us and establish thou the work of our hands. Yea, the work of our hands, establish thou it. You know, we work out of Abrahamic accreditation. We work out of Abrahamic accreditation. You don't have to worry. You have to be anxious. You don't have to toil. The blessing is going to be the blessing. Whether you feel like it one day, you don't feel like it the next. You're going to be a son of God whether you feel like it one day or you don't feel like it the next. You're going to be born again one day and you're going to be born again the next day whether you feel like it or not. Hallelujah. Those entitlements work the same way. Do not be a dissembler. Do not do the scriptures disservice. Let the scriptures Explain themselves and exclaim themselves and be exactly what they are for you and on your behalf. All the promises of God are in him. Yes and amen. That means you're entitled to all of it. Grace has qualified you. Grace is what got you saved in the first place. And if grace got you saved, then it can also preserve your life and give treasure to your life and bring pleasure to your life. Thank you, Jesus. You know, some people are, they're content and satisfied with what they have. And they're trusting in their job and they're trusting in their benefits you know, the Bible says that he daily loads us with benefits. Amen. Who's taking advantage of that? Mm-hmm. He makes downloads every single day. Yes. Loads us down mm-hmm. with benefits. Yes. I have a lot of people say, I got this job, I got these benefits, I got dental, I got health insurance, I got this and that, I got government help. This and... Fine. But you know what? God is the one that will preserve your life. He is your healer. He brings health to you, strength to you. God has a benefit package out of this world. You cannot work by feelings. Because if you go by feelings, feelings are fickle. Feelings will flee from you as fast as a bird flies from a window. As fast as a bird flies from a window. But, you know, it's not by sight but it's by faith we need to hold on to faith in his grace that is already done every demand for a qualification has already been satisfied hallelujah all sin has been dealt with the curse has been reversed and everything good has been released from heaven All we have to do is receive. The line of the tribe of Judah has prevailed to open the book, to break the seals thereof, and to let the extreme benefits and blessings of the covenant filter and flow and flower and produce in our lives. Hallelujah. We're shrouded and surrounded with blessings that don't even know it. Hallelujah. You know, and, and it gives a warning here in Jeremiah 49, 4. He says, wherefore glorious thou in the valleys, the flowing valley, O backsliding daughter, that trusted in her treasures, saying, who will come unto me? In other words, people have uh, enough to get by today. And once they get a little bit of jingle in their hands, they get a little money in the bank, they think that everything's fine. 
And then they're trusting in that little bit they have in the bank and they're trusting in the little bit they have in their pocket and they don't think anything, uh, and they're, they're, they're totally handled and, and you know, they're going to get by because they just got by yesterday and, and didn't see anything happen. And, you know, they just begin to trust in things, in the material. And, you know, material is, is something that will shift. But you've got to trust in the unchanging hand of God. I like what it says in, in Job 8.20. It says, Behold, God will not cast away a perfect man. God will not cast away a perfect Did you know that you may, you've been made blameless in Christ? You're perfect in him. God's not going to cast you away. Amen. In all that the, Jesus said that Father draws to me, I won't lose any of them. I love it. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. We've got to stay in that place of perfection and just election and let God swirl and whirl around us and just blend us with the glory, blend us with heaven, blend us with the treasures and the promises, blend us with the Godhead, blend us with the power and the pristine a uh, 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 performance that heaven has to bring. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. It says in verse 21 there of Job 8, it says, uh, uh, continue to uh, not cast away, you know, your thoughts of perfection until he fills your mouth with laughing and thy lips with rejoicing. My God. And I will shout with joy. And I was shot with joy. My God, you see, if we really have a revelation of grace, we really have a, re a revelation of the confidence that Christ has uh, procured for us, we will be shouting and praising and laughing and dancing and singing, and we will be glorifying God. Can you say amen? Knowing that it's all, it's all handled. It's handled. We're accepted in the beloved by faith. And the glory of his grace. Thank you, Jesus. Look what it says in Ephesians 1, 6 and 7. I'm going to try to close out here in a few minutes. But it says in Ephesians 1, 6 and 7, to the praise of the glory of his grace. To the praise of the glory of his grace. By which he made us accepted in the beloved. There it is. Grace has made us accepted in Christ. I don't care how far away you think you are. Grace has made the provision. The provision is Christ Jesus and everything he is and he was and he is becoming. It is yours and you are in him. Yeah. Come on, can you say amen? Grace has made the provision to the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in the beloved. In him we have redemption through the blood and the forgiveness of sins. According, look at this, according to the riches of his grace. The riches of his grace, the riches, the riches of his grace. There it is, riches of his grace. Isn't that powerful? Amen. Ephesians 2, 7, so God uh, can point us to all future ages as examples of his incredible wealth, the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness toward us. As shown us all that he has done for us. Who are united with Christ. That's the yes. new living testament. Yes. Ephesians 4, 7. But to each one of us, each one of us has grace. Each one of us has been distributed. God has given us the gift of faith. Each one of us has a measure of faith. But each one of us has a gift of grace. Yes. Ephesians 4, it's already resident within your life. You just have to call it up. You just have to exercise it. You just have to uh, expand it and let it grow. And stop worrying and stop concerning yourself and stop being self-centered and stop, stop, stop jeopardizing and stop um, disqualifying yourself. Quit it. Ephesians 4, 7. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ has apportioned it. Grace is given as Christ has apportioned it. Whoo! Call up grace. Call up faith. Call up the anointing. Call up the spirit. Amen. Call up life within you. Hallelujah. It'll cascade. 
it'll move. It'll move with force and power. You know, what will it do? For, well, in the area I'm thinking about is commerce, because I had that dream about, if you, re if you saw my video, I was preaching in a bank. And everybody was, place was packed. And I was up on stage, and I was preaching. And uh, it, was, it was a very jovial, exciting. People were laughing, and they were just hilarious. And I was teaching Diane around this pole up front, and every time she would say something, I would say something counter, and everybody would uh, just laugh even louder. Yeah, we and the Lord was showing me that laughter Amen, and gladness and joy yeah. and staying and joined to grace and having a good outlook on everything yeah. and letting God fix your yeah. persona and personality and let him put you in a position where you are in celebration. Calibrated celebration. Look what it says in 2 Corinthians 8, 9. For you know the generous grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you could be made rich. Jesus became poor. He, he was poured out to embrace us in our poverty. In our indemnity, Amen. in our disqualification, yes. in our inability, yes. he was poured out into that realm Amen. so that he could take us, catch us in his grace, swirl and whirl and just uh, dominate and predominate over anything that called us into uh, defeat. And he and he he lifted us up. No, he was rich. Yet for our sakes, he became poor, so that by his poverty we could become rich. He claimed, he bought our poverty. He bought our defeat. He 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 bought our by going to the cross. He bought our dysfunction. He bought our inability. He became poor so that he could catch us up into the, it says, into the generous grace of our Lord. Yes. Into his generous, he's very generous. Very generous. Honey, he's generous. God wants to drive away all the darkness in every area of your life. He wants to shield you, amen? He wants to shield you from all forms of deception. He wants to illuminate truth within your understanding. He wants your eyes of your heart to be open and to be clear. Yeah. He wants to take away from you all the powers that do not originate from the blessing. And he wants you to inherit all things. You know, I'm ready. I mean, you know, it's all there for the taking. Of, you just got to. Stop shooting yourself in the foot. Yes. Stop saying no every time God's saying yes. Stop saying I can't do it when God says you can do it. Stop saying I can't have it when God says you can have it. Yes. You know, Colossians 1.26, we just got to understand the mystery. The mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to the saints. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of the mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. You know, the psalmist tells us in 145.11, They shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom, and they shall talk of thy power. They shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom, and they shall talk of thy power. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, for we walk uh, by faith and not by sight. Yes, 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 yes. Walk by faith and not by sight. Not by sight. I mean, it's all there. And you say, well, God, you know, I've had so many setbacks. I've had so many things that's happened. I have so much history. Things have been so bad. I have a, pot, a pattern of failure. It's my, in my genealogy. It seems like I can't get away from bad things. It seems like I always lose and never barely, just always barely getting by. 
Well, listen, what you need to do then is to just um, realize 2 Corinthians 9, 8. 2 Corinthians 9, 8, God is able to make all grace abound to you. God is able to make all grace abound to you. That having, always having all sufficiency in all things. God is able to make all grace abound to you. Everybody say, God is able to make all grace abound to me. I mean, it's leaping and in, in, abounding. It's, it's running after us. It's crying out for us. It, it's, it's just making overtures every day. It, it is pleading with us. It is, it's just saying, please stop trying to do it yourself. Humble yourself and let me take the throttle. Let me take control. Let me push the buttons. Let me turn the dials. Let me set this thing up for you the way I've planned it and the way my father has lined it out. Come on, he's got it all handled. Everybody say, God's got it all handled. Yeah, I like what it says in Job 18, 8, 16. It says, he is green before the sun. He is green before the sun, and his branch shooteth forth in his garden. And his branch shooteth forth in his garden. You know, um, God speaks to you and tells you that his word, he sent his word and it accomplishes that which he pleased and it prospers in the thing where he sent it. God sent his word to you and you became born again. And now you are an heir of Christ. You should be clear and aware that God is moving you to the highest possible places of blessing. Again, go to my video uh, page, Stephen Coy Sterling. Uh, listen to that message, uh, audio I sent about. It's called My Dream of Joy. My Dream of Joy. Go there and watch that, My Dream of Joy. Not I Dream of Genie, but My Dream of Joy. You don't have to go to the slot machine. You don't have to play the lottery. No. I mean, the lottery doesn't even have, it's a tip of the, I mean, I think the Powerball is $750 million, a billion, a million dollars, $750 million right now. That is nothing. That is absolutely nothing when it comes to what God transacts in terms of his universes in the, in the cosmos that he's created. Well, anyway, that's it for now. God bless and God's best. Steve Sterling is saying we're totally adequate. We're never inadequate. Yeah. We're always above and not beneath. We're blessed coming in, blessed going out. Whatever we set our hands to do, it shall prosper. In Jesus' name, bye-bye for now. God bless and God's best. Yeah. Oh, Amen. Thank you, Father. You know, uh, 